you guys and gals, never here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you mount Twitter, the Gaming Dragon, today I'm coming with back, coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Glory Hounds. All right, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up, and let's -a go. Let's -a go. All right. <clears throat> Alex is up there. It could be anyone. Clear the way. That man's a thief. Anyone. Dear Lord, dear Lord, that is him. What's he doing? Hold on. Is that Ray from earlier over there? Lou, you... Lou, reckon you'd uh, know what's going on? I promised not to... Fine. So, apparently it started with... Uh-oh. The crowd in the VIP section parts with a cacophony of gasps and yells. It's absolute chaos. A perfect opportunity to give chase. I jump off the catwalk. I can't see him! Where'd he go? Tracker says he went that way. The backstage area. Milo, where does that lead? It leads to stairwell. He, he is most likely trying to escape from roof. Not if we can help it. As we run up to it, the door to the backstage area opens and closes, clicking shut all on its own. I can only just stop myself from slamming into it. Did you just see that? This isn't an automatic door, is it? It's like he turned invisible. Incredible, I've never seen anything like that in my life. It's like the Stinger issue 56, Revenge of the, Invis Revenge of the Invisible Iguana Man. If I recall correctly, the Stinger ended up losing that fight. Let's hope we don't end up following his example. I don't suppose there's another set of stairs we could take. That cost us what precious little time we have. And we have none to lose as is. Stand back. Before I can protest, he lifts his leg and stomps the door. Something cracks and the door slips open again. I wonder if we'll ever get through a mission with Ra without Raul smashing something. My money's on no. Oh, those are cute outfits. I hear someone yell as equipment clatters to the floor in front of us. Camu flickers into view, having seemingly almost tripped over a mannequin. So he was invisible. Long time no see, Kablooey. Got a voice. Camo! It's Camo! Yeah, yeah, what do you think you're doing here? We want the money talk scound back, you, you long-tongued scoundrel. I'm afraid I can't do that. I have great plans for it, you see. Uh, maybe I should do a more smooth-talking voice for him. I'm afraid I can't do that. I have great plans for it, you see. I don't care what kind of fashion statement you're trying to make. You're nothing but a common crook. An unremarkable thug who thinks himself a mastermind. The chameleon's big eyes grow even bigger, then he squints. Common. Unremarkable. Seems to have struck a nerve. Hmm. And that is some good water. You sniveling hounds have no idea about the hardships I've faced. Unremarkable, you say. Unremarkable. Try invisible. To not be seen or recognized by those around you. Is, uh, is this a low self-esteem issue, or...? Low self-esteem doesn't give you the right to go and take things that aren't yours. I was not speaking metaphorically, you absolutely incompetent ignoramus. The chameleon seems to shimmer for a second before starting to fade. Wait, he's gone? The boss and I look around frantically. Where... This ability, this curse. Whoa, that's coming from behind us. I am my grappling hook the sound reflexively. How did he? All my life, all I've ever, all I'd ever done was blend in. It comes rather naturally to us chameleons, as I'm sure even someone as witless as you knows. Not even dear mother and father seem to see me. They were always too occupied burning their company, only ever talking to me when I was ruining their perfect image. They weren't even present when I took my first steps. On my first day of school, they left me standing in the pouring rain. <sighs> I had all the money I could ever need. All the toys. But I needed a family, and I had none. The voice quiets down. So I took up sewing in my free time, perhaps hoping that if I made something pretty enough, that if I accomplished, it, that if I accomplished enough, they would finally see me. That anyone would. Then, one day, it happened. I was at the school Christmas gala, determined to show off my best work in front of my entire class. I had spent weeks on that outfit. I was ready. 
I stepped onto the podium when I was struck by sudden nausea. Perhaps it was the bright lights. Perhaps that night's caviar had not agreed with me. My ears were ringing, but I could make out the cries of where did he go and what's happening. And lo and behold, when I opened my eyes, I discovered I could no longer see my eyelids or my hands. Even the clothes I had spent such a long time making had vanished. This accursed gift awoke at the worst possible time. Can you imagine? Invisible! Someone as glorious as myself! I stayed like that for two whole days, unable to see myself even in a mirror. Our family doctor didn't know what to do with me. Hospitals ran tests but found nothing. To this day, I do not know how or why it happened. But father, mother, they called me sick. They called me a freak. A disgrace to the family name. I had never gotten their attention before, but for this, they disowned me. I was destitute. Left to fend for myself with nothing to my name but our smallest mansion, its staff, and a paltry 500,000 euros. You call that paltry? I do! Obviously, I was desperate. I had to take what I could. Consequence be damned. A plebeian such as yourself wouldn't understand. Make your point already. Was this when you decided to take to stealing from the innocent? So impatient. Believe me, I tried to make an honest living. I went to the greatest fashion houses in Europa, talked to the greatest minds in fashion history, asking, nay, begging for the tiniest sliver of recognition. I showed them my finest works, bared my soul to them. I thought I had finally met kindred spirits, but it did not last. The designs I had spent countless hours poring over were stolen, put on display without so much as even a mention or a footnote in the magazine. When I spoke up, they only silenced me, smeared me. I was at my wit's end. And so, to put it in terms even you simpletons can understand, I figured that if the universe deemed it necessary to curse me, I might as well make use of it, hmm? It took some time, but I eventually learned to control my new ability. The nausea became tolerable. I still, excuse me, I still loathe to use it, but being invisible has its perks. I can slip into an establishment unseen, take what I need, and someone more invisible than I, someone more visible than I, can take the fall with no one getting any the wiser. My faithful helpers are my kindred spirits now. So you're not working alone. You can't very well expect me to partake in great heists on my own. Why, I might break a nail. There will always be people as hungry for money and recognition as I am, eager to help me attain my goals. Our mutual friend Ahab was one of them. A remarkably stupid one. He never had a vision as grand as I did. And what would that be? To turn only the most beautiful things into fashion items that will make me a star. I will be seen, metaphorically or otherwise. The world will know the name Camo. And you had best not forget it either. The world will know you for the, f for the fraud and thief you truly are. See, the only ones here that know what I've done are you two, and I don't intend to leave you alive much longer if I can help it. Try us. You'll find we're hard to kill. I'm definitely not. I would, but this is not my area of choice, my arena of choice. If you want the gown, or what's left of it, you'll have to find me further in. What's left of it? I had to get- I had to rid myself of some dead weight carrying it in here. All right. The fake euro bills had to go. You took it apart? Wait, those are fake bills? Most of the money talks gown's value lies in its diamond-encrusted bodice. I need the diamonds, not some artist's vague political statement on capitalism. So why did you come here? To add something else to your collection? Me? Steal something from here? Heavens no, I just came here to have a good time. My entourage already took care of the stealing. How? This place was under lock and key. Who do you think owns said lock and key, my dearest Dalmatian? Who do you think organized this event to begin with? 
You didn't. Oh, I absolutely did. It took years of planning, but once I'd set the things up, the thing up called all the right people. It was like taking candy from a baby. Or like taking the Money Talks gown from Ahab. What's there to steal at a fashion event you're running? And why would you even host one in the first place? Still haven't caught on, I see. I wouldn't deign to painstakingly track down everyone who wronged me when instead, a dark chuckle echoes through the room, I can just make them come to me. I can breathe in all the fame and adoration that has been withheld from me for so long. He reappears inches away from my face. Before I can nab him, he's gone again, reappearing by the door seconds later. Well, my associates take all the things they can get their hands on from all the designers collaborating on the show. And all the guests. Wallets, jewels, gowns, priceless fashion artifacts. Not to mention the ticket sales are making me a pretty penny as well. He shrugs his shoulders, shaking his head dramatically, a move when I get the impression he's rehearsed in front of a mirror. Market something as the most exclusive event of the year, and the people will come running, it seems. He scoffs. Not a single one even remembered my face tonight. But that's all right. They will soon enough. Everyone who once ignored me, the public, the other designers, they'll rue the day. I will leave them with nothing. They're gonna find out you duped them eventually. My involvement is a secret that will die with you. By the time the dust settles, I'll be far away from Batavia, making fashion history. Now, I'm afraid I must be taking my leave. My flight's about to depart, you see. Toodles. Caboose! Get back here! Caboose. <laughs> That's how we ended up running, running up these never-ending stairs. And boy, does this make me regret skipping out on cardio these past many years. My glutes already weren't doing so hot after last night's activities, but this? Ah! Ah! This is torture. I tap my earpiece. M Milo! Yes. Are we almost there? No. What about, uh, what about halfway there? Not quite. I take a second to breathe. We're all running up behind, running up ahead of me. Come on, Spot. It's only a couple dozen floors. The boss's excitement is unfortunately not contagious. In fact, I'm sure I'll pass out if I need to climb up even one more floor. Actually, can we just skip this? Skip what? These blasted stairs! This is technically still my flashback, so why don't we just fast forward a bit? My legs could use some mercy. I don't understand what you're getting at. Flashback? What do you mean fla- I snap my fingers. <sighs> there you go. Yes! To where it all began. Alright. Oh! And so we, and so we are, once again, standing face to face with the target. Well, <clears throat> there you are, you treacherous snake. You won't get away this time. I have to admit, I'm surprised you'd be foolish enough to follow me all the way up here. Of course, judging by your fashion sense, making bad choices seems to come rather naturally to you. Give it up, villain. You've nowhere left to run. All right, this is the moment Milo's been training me for. I assume the position. Shoulder straight, arm outstretched, index finger pointed at the culprit, just like they do at the movies. Hand over those diamonds right now, uh... What was your name again? Hmm? You cannot possibly be serious. You spent all this time prattling on about what led you here, and you still can't remember. Look, it even says my name on the screen right now. Look! Right down there! Screen? What, what screen? Just summon your little friends and let's get this over with. Alright, fine! Minions, rise! Sure enough, there's the butterflies. I recognize a couple of them as the waiters from the show. No! And that's how it all started. Oh, as for how it's going, well... To action! The butterflies dive at us one by one in perfect formation. I realize right away these henchmen are a different league compared to Ahab's bumbling crew. They're coordinated, not a single movement wasted. And their swords are absolutely massive. 
One hit from those and I'm toast. Or a finely sliced ham. Form up, back to back. Don't let them catch you from behind. Uh, Donhelm, sir, plan? Divide and conquer. Divide? I can't even take on one of these guys. Where do you even find them? I know you can't spot, now dive. He runs away from my location, and so staring up at the point of a sharp, sharp sword coming straight at me, I dive the other way. The first butterfly misses by a hair, crashing into the metal door that leads to the stairwell. That's gotta hurt. Ooh. The second one does, it, does turn in time to chase me down. He's hot on my heels. I attempt to run, but my legs are about to give way. There's barely any feeling left in them. Thanks, Ahab. Thanks, stairs. Ah! I lose my footing and crash to the ground, arms scraped by the gravel. The tip of the sword is inches from my face, and just as I expect to be impaled, HALT! I hear the zip of a grappling hook before I see Raul's foot hit the butterfly's face hard from the side. The sword falls to the ground. The butterfly follows. I think it's about time for you to fly the coop. No, that doesn't sound right. Hmm. I'll have to workshop some more one-liners when we get back to base. He pulls me up. Ugh. Excuse me. Th thank you. That was amazing. Don't celebrate yet, Duskhound. We still have to take care of the rest. <laughs> the chameleon chuckles. Don't think for this for a second this is going to be easy, you sniveling mutts. All right, y'all, I gotta pause it right there because I gotta get to work. All right, thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. All right, y'all, I gotta head to work. I love you all, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye.